I I would be, <clears throat> and it's terrible. Looking at, you know, just I'll randomly pick something. I'm looking at something on my desk. Kaon. People would burn your building down if you did this in Kaon style. Right. So to that degree, I was I was really captivated with the way that they did a lot of the movement of the characters, the way that the character design and, and patterning was done, that it was very seriously done with an with an with an air to this is not to be funny. This is not to be like, we're not going to have the little sweat bead come down. We're not going to have the little cross on the forehead. This is going to go away from any kind of, you know, comedic shortcuts. And we're going to do this long format. And we're going to do this to the seriousness that the subject matter deserves. And it's like, I could feel that through it because the pace of this is glacial. You know, there's not any kind of like snippet kind of way where you're like, oh, okay, that's that's a visual cue that means this, and now we can just avoid the next ten minutes. And it's like, nope, we we move through it in the pace that it that it was purposely done for. So it's like, okay, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Well, I, you know, John, to your point, I, you know, it was, I think it was purposely done not not to do anime i mean because I, yeah. I to your point i don't think i don't see how you could um you know that kind of thing and also um i think there were just i think there were some cultural considerations um made in making this in, in making this movie um the you know um did you notice sepia tones? Did you notice browns? Did you notice yeah. all those different kinds of colors? Very things? muted. You know, they, they, respect, right, yeah. muted. Yeah. And they took great pains to not uh, to make um, the Frank family and you know the other the other family and and, and the dentist to not look Japanese. Mm -hmm. I mean, nobody looked Japanese right. in this in this thing. Um, and there is no there was no. I, I don't think I think when they sat down and did the storyboards, they said, you know, we can't, mm -hmm. we yeah. can't do it. We we can't do it this way. Mm -hmm. You know, we can we can do an animation for like Grave of the Fireflies because that's us, mm -hmm. but we right. can't do that with this. And I think and it's just and Grave of the Fireflies and, and, and it was well done. Yeah, it was well done. I felt you know in that way. So you know, I think not to say. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just, just going to add on. Like I think Grave of the Fireflies is a, is a perfect example here of what they were trying to do this is very much like the animation style of grave of the fireflies you know no one's yeah, yeah. doing crazy jumps it's very muted it's very naturalistic yeah serious mm. very serious serious yeah mm. totally um but yeah no totally and i i think um i completely agree also about the pace um oh yeah because i i first started watching the movie and i was like man this is slow and then I realized that's the point. Like, that is the experience right. of these people is yeah. just waiting, really. Yeah. That, that was their entire life for years. Um, and so that's what you feel. You know, you, you feel this sort of bored impatience. It's like, yep, yeah, <laughs> that is what you're supposed to feel. I uh, mean, you know, here you have this, this amazing scene where, where they're like, okay, we're, we're doing the thing. We're, yeah. we're, we're mm -hmm. going away. We're going to a different place. We're going to hide because we and we prepared for this moment. Mm -hmm. So you know we're we're, we're doing it. Mm -hmm. And they and so you know you have this tense these tense scenes of them in different pairs, moving through through the city, and you know just kind of going you're tense and you're tense and you're tense and you're tense and you, tense and you get inside and you get the kind of a little bit of the excitement of oh a new space and mm -hmm. you know how things work and you know Otto the father you know gives the rules and stuff and then everybody sits down. Yeah, yeah, and it's just like you know, just like mm -hmm. we're shutting everything down because you have to, and that's that's the life. They sit around the table and they are quiet and they don't do anything. And that scene, believe it or not, that is actually in the play mm. with the, with the pot nice. with the pot telling yeah. Anne that this is how it has to happen now. Mm -hmm. Yep, and you know, and that that kind of thing, and you know, just you know, then you sit there, you're just like, <sighs> and wait. Mm -hmm. And wait, and wait with punctuations of terror throughout yeah. the throughout mm -hmm. the throughout the movie. Um, folks are saying they couldn't hear me. I'm hoping that is fixed now. 
Apologies, folks. Uh, let me know if that is still not working, although I'm saying that in words, so I don't know why that's actually useful. Um, <laughs> technical issues, Saturday. But yeah. yes, Tec- absolutely. Technical Saturday night. Yeah. Um, uh, it's also interesting how the movie is just very deliberate in its pacing. Um, like, I don't mean slow, but I mean things unravel at a very um, everyday human pace. You know, they don't yes. rush through scenes. Uh, when the, the, the new family gets introduced, like, there's no big drama, there's no big huge amounts of stuff. It's just, here are new people who are going to be living with us now. And that's just a thing, right? And, uh, you know, it's not, it's not, you know, Anne of Green Gables, where Anne would be, you know, oh, how wonderful, or oh, whatever. No, it's just, it's just very quiet, normal life, um, which I really appreciated. But it was, it was just this, this slow thing. And again, an hour and 42. It's, it's yeah. Um, it just does kind of go on and go on and go on. And I think it's also one of the other powers of the movie is that um, we, I mean, and to your point earlier, Steve, um, when, they, when they sat down to make this, they, they had to make certain decisions. And like, we all know how this ends. Now, I doubt anyone going into the theater to watch this doesn't know the story of Anne Frank. And so that becomes part of the power of the pace is that you're waiting for the Nazis to show up. Yeah. You know, you know that's how this is going to end, and so just watching them going on, and they're... And the thing is, A, like, they know that's a possibility, um, so there's there's that drama, but also there's just this, this constant tension throughout the, the entire movie that's just sitting there, kind of in the back of everyone's heads. Well, it's almost kind of like Hitchcock um, yes. method of, of tension, where you know you, the audience, we know what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. You know, we like you know, of course, we know how this ends, but and we know how it happens. But then we're like, you're watching this scene, but you're watching it play out, and you can't tell the the, the yeah. people that you're watching, you know, you know, try and run away now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. or, you know, because because mm-hmm. they're coming. And you can't do anything in it. So there's a, there's that certain sense as you're watching this, it's almost like I, I don't know if it was you know on purpose or not you know to do it that way. But you know for you just to go, can there be a happy? Mm-hmm. Can this be Disney? Can right. we have yeah. a, you know at the ending you yeah. know suddenly we switch over the to, to anime? It's Eurocamp. You know, yeah, it's, right. it's yeah. not gonna happen, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Um... Well, it's one of the interesting things, too, is seeing how they're reacting to things. And, like, whenever New Year comes around. And they're like, well, hopefully things get better this year. Yeah. Because, of course, that's what you think and want and feel, right? Like, they don't know how this is going to turn out. Right. Like them being elated at the Allied landings. Right. In Normandy. Mm -hmm. Even though Mm -hmm. that is geographically a long way away from where they are. Yeah. And, you know what I mean? You see them plotting where yeah. allied advances are but it's nowhere near them mm-hmm. so it's like yeah. there's that you have the anxiety of potentially getting discovered with the anticipation of liberation mm-hmm. and it, 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 you know you got these you got all this stuff going on and it's just like but other than clapping hooray it just settles back down again yeah. so you're like oh you're killing me yeah absolutely and uh that's also interesting because there's just so much of there's so much they couldn't know yeah you know, right like, we live in a world of so many so, so much media saturation it's hard to imagine a world where you know you don't know um you know hopefully you get an occasional news broadcast um it was also interesting how they actually showed or they actually played like churchill's broadcast yeah, mm-hmm. that was yeah. Really cool. Well, think about that. How like you don't get anything until what people give you, you know. Yeah. Up until they got that radio, mm-hmm. you know. Up until they got that radio, and d- did you find it interesting that even though they were in hiding, they still hid it in the book? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know. This well, like, presum- yeah. presumably that was not, you know, go down to the radio store and buy a radio. Mm-hmm. Right. You right. Yeah, presumably yeah, yeah. that was Meep Meep's contacts. Who she'd said at one point, you know, oh, the group that was, you know, providing the, the majority of food, they've been caught. Caught. 
Yeah. So presumably she that radio was produced by the resistance organization and in the book so that if Meep got, you know, hey, what's in that package, lady, yeah. that could open it right. up and be like, it's just a book. Yeah. You, oh, you know and, what I mean? So it's like, I get that. Oh, and this is absolutely yeah. a time when people built radios. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I'm the I'm, crystal yeah. crystal radio sets. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I'm sure it was kind of cobbled together from bits precisely for that reason. Totally. Yeah, so that, that was that was neat. I mean, and that's another point about this. Holy smokes, the research. Um, yeah. You know, for a, for a movie about something that happened a, a very long time ago, like there are no anachronisms in this. It's very very, you know, ha- you know, close on. And, and again, this is being made halfway around the world by people from a very different culture who are yeah. not familiar with all of the various details of this. Uh, mm-hmm. They did a tremendous job of getting so many of these details right it's really really impressive well early on in the film we see Anne riding a bike yeah and she says there's so many new restrictions so many things mm-hmm. else and you see her just holding her sweater to her chest oh, yeah. and she said one of the things is that Jewish people can't ride bikes yeah mm-hmm. and it's like it, you that yeah. you could have not had that I mean yeah and I don't mean that in a in a, in a dumb way that you'd be disingenuous to the mm-hmm. actual diary right but that you that could have been something for the sake of production that you could have just sort of left out right but instead somebody did the research knew what was going on and like included this in there Mm -hmm. for the completeness of the story and to like you know illustrate these are just little things but they mount up over time yeah Mm -hmm. you know um mm. to be clear what she's doing is um she has the star on her chest that all Jews had to to, to yeah. hold by, and she was, by mandate. Uh, by mandate, and she was riding by some German officers, so she had to kind of hide that so they wouldn't yeah. know she was Jewish. So yeah, those weren't familiar. Which um, hiding the star in and of itself was a punishable offense, right? You know, it's like mm-hmm. oh boy, right. yeah, Jeez. absolutely. Um, and that's one of the things that I know we talked about before makes this so such a difficult story is that. These characters are not freedom fighters. They're not heroes. They're not fighting back against the Nazi regime. They, you know, they're not special people. They're just normal people trying not to get killed. That's right. all they are. Um, and it's one of the things that I think makes, like to your guys' point, the the sort of simplicity of the story and the kind of slow everydayness of it. Um, on the one hand, feel a little harder to take because it's like, okay, but nothing's happening. But also, right. like, that is, um, that was their experience because they weren't doing anything. Like, they, they, they weren't part of anything. Um, you know, yeah, they weren't mining drama. bridges or, mm-hmm. like, sniping German soldiers. They were mm-hmm. just people, just mm-hmm. average mm-hmm. people, people. Yeah. that somebody in another country decided was, like, the thing to do mm-hmm. rather than just be a normal human being. You know what I mean? It's, Right. Angering. It angers me every time I see stuff about this. Mm-hmm. Just... Yeah, absolutely. Um, and they also did such a, such a fine job when uh, the, uh, the the thief comes in um, and they yes. come downstairs. Um, <clears throat> and again, just kind of the, the dread of that moment and the fact that they don't drag it out. Like it, it does. It, it feels very much like a you know, scene from a horror film, if you will. Um, and it just becomes kind of the, um, you know, just they let that play out as to how frightening it would be um, when you can't check, you can't know, you can't find out. Yeah. Um, you have to just kind of pull back and hope you can react in some way. And of course, that, that becomes um, uh, echoed back again at the end when they're found out. What's, what was interesting about that particular scene mm-hmm. for me was this is where you get interpretations of mm-hmm. source material. Mm-hmm. Um, the plays that are done mm-hmm. on stage of this, when the cat knocks it down, knocks mm-hmm. the thing down, is playing with it, and that's how you know, the thief knows somebody's there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it's actually, in the plays, it's actually Peter stumbles and drops the candle. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Hmm. And there's a whole scene after that where, you know, where uh, once the thief is, has run away and the cops mm-hmm. have come and gone to you know, investigate and they, and they leave, um, there's a whole 
10 minute scene where Peter is just beside himself and they're trying to console him and he keeps saying, I've killed us all, I've killed us all, I've killed us all. And, you know, that stress in, in the place, like that stress mm-hmm. moment of, you know, he's vo- vocalizing what everybody's yeah. thinking, mm-hmm. which is, oh, my God, you did this. And, OK, yeah. well, we're not going to, you know, do this. But this is a real world reaction mm-hmm. to to that. And I think it was interesting that they use a, a cat as that, mm-hmm. as the proxy yeah. for that. And um, so, you know, there's 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 no blame there. But. Sure. Still, just that that terror of just like going because you know the other part in, in also in the book and in in in, in, on, in the plays, um, there's a discussion after the Peter meltdown mm-hmm. where they go, what are we gonna do? What if this guy's a thief and he gets caught by the police? Yeah. What happens then? He's gonna get interrogated. And he's gonna probably gonna try and find a way to get himself out of jail or favor with the Nazis or whatever so he doesn't get punished and he's going to say you know I heard people at this place right. yeah. there might be some Jews hiding there mm-hmm. so there's this whole discussion of do we leave mm-hmm. do we stay mm-hmm. do we you know where, where, where do we go and um, you know I didn't it wasn't in the anime here but you know but that's I think that was kind of like it's still an undercurrent of just that helplessness of what do you do yeah you know, mm-hmm. they, they literally can't move. They, they yeah. literally can't run away at that point. And it's not like they can't, they could do anything about it. Well, and especially at this point when you have so many people in one spot. Yeah, right. Um, finding space for that many people at this stage in the war is, you know, not like finding a space for two or three. Right. Yeah, and we know from the, the air raid and stuff that mm-hmm. the German presence is pretty thick, mm-hmm. not just in checking on houses and raiding things, but literally anti-aircraft operations, just general uh, security around the city for the war. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, so they can't just pick up and run off someplace when they don't see the Gestapo around because they might run into trucks full of soldiers Mm -hmm. moving around. Yeah. It's like, uh, exactly. Um, And then you come to the ending. Um, And boy, did I love this ending. Um, in the sense that, oh boy, did they tee it up well. Uh, because all throughout the movie, they cut to this exterior shot of the, uh, the building. And just people walking back and forth and back and forth. And then they cut to that, and you see a man in a trench coat walk down the street and walk into the office. And when I saw that, I thought, this is it. Yeah, nobody else is around. Mm-hmm. Like, oh boy. Yep. Um, and then he walks in and says, um, what's the last something like, um, I need to ask you some questions. Yeah. And it's like, there we go. Also, I should point out, um, the film does a remarkable job of not turning the Nazis into cartoon villains. Um, mm-hmm. obviously sure. horrific what's going on here. Um, but they are simply represented as this, this force of people. Right as as this thing, um, and you know th- th- there there is often a tendency to make the to turn the Nazis into again caricatures, and yeah. which can then kind of blunt the impact of what what, what they're doing. But like you no, know, these were people too, who were who were executing this horrible thing, who were you know going along with this thing. Um, that's. You know, part of the horror of the whole thing, right? Is that this, these were this was all portrayed by actual human beings? Yeah. Um, um, you know, and then the, the fact that the uh, the guy just says, you know, you have five minutes. Um, you know, just very simple. You know, you know what's happening, and it's kind of interesting because again, mm-hmm. because of the pacing of the movie, there's no sense, you know, there's no need for drama. There's no need for people to scream and yell and fall on their knees and all that kind of stuff because you know. Yeah. The the I think they did it very, very well in so far that as the movie is going through its, you know, glacial pace, mm. um <clears throat> it's from the diary that, that we're getting the story. Right. Mm-hmm. It's Anne's voice, but it's really the diary that's getting the story. Yeah. And so, so yeah, Kitty. Mm-hmm. And um, so we're, we're getting the story and she narrates and then the thing, the scene happens, she narrates this. Mm-hmm. 
and it goes on and on and on. And then at the very end, right before the Gestapo come in, mm -hmm. there is no narration. Right. You're right. Things are just going on normal. Like mm -hmm. you're looking at them. At this point, you have accepted that what they do is normal. Mm -hmm. They're quiet. They're reading. They're sleeping. Someone's making food. Someone's doing the thing that they do from day to day. But there's no narration, and there's no narration because there's no journal entry mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. into Kitty. Yeah. So, you know, it was so that's that was like the big for me. For me, that was like, oh, here we are. Yeah. I don't have to look to see how far I am in the movie, <laughs> looking where, how, where, what time we are at. Mm -hmm. It's just like, you know, we get to that point, and it's just like any second now. And it was so well done being understated like you said where they just really just not uh, not open the door knock open the door and hear the, the guys come in and the most physical thing you get is the dentist he got who just goes mm -hmm. yeah you know you know and that's it and it, because they've been so quiet this entire time he doesn't he can't there is no shrieking because yeah. they, they've conditioned themselves not to do this mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Well, it's also interesting, too, that because it is from Anne's diary, that even when you see things like when Meep sees the vegetable mm -hmm. guy yeah. hauled off, there isn't, there's not a lot of extraneous talking. There's just two guys behind mm -hmm. her that say, you know, oh, he was, they, they took him away because he was hiding Jews. Yeah. And it's like, there's not a, there's not extraneous information because that's not what Anne would have been told. Right, yes. Me right. would have told her, I saw him hauled away. Mm -hmm. I heard a couple of guys say that he was hiding Jews. You guys need to be, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like, yeah. the way that this is treated, the story in totality is like, yeah. you don't have those, that cloud of like, oh, we should probably explain these things around right. over here. Even though right. Anne didn't talk about it, we should explain it so that people understand the yeah. context better. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, it's actually kind of Spartan in a lot of places because Anne had no idea. The Germans yeah. could have been having a conversation in the truck to drive over. Mm -hmm. That guy in the right. trench coat could have been like at his office and they're saying, hey, we need you to go to like, you know, Rue d'Argentan and find out what's going on in building number two. Yeah. Anne has no knowledge of that. Mm -hmm. So you just mm -hmm. have, I know a guy showed up. Mm -hmm. That's it. You yeah. know what I mean? Like the end of things. It's like from her perspective, all this is just that self-contained world in those few rooms. It has the character of an anecdote. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. And to that point, like you know, the movie opens with you know, Anne getting this present. Right? There's no here's what's going on in World War II. There's no context yeah. of all that stuff because that wasn't Anne's reality. Right? Obviously, you knew that stuff, but it wasn't the you know within the structure of the story. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, absolutely. Um, and then of course they're they're marched off. And here's where I was getting a little worried um, because. You know, how do you end this? Um, and boy, was this classy. Um, because, you know, they're, they're loaded off, and then we just pan across the city um, with those doves. Yeah, the birds, the birds return, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, doves, obviously, peace, um, flying through. Um, and then it's also interesting how they then cut back, apologies for getting a little weepy, to the their apartment ransacked, yeah. um, which you had not seen ransacked before. Yeah, um, but it's a lovely symbol of what's just happened. Right, that everything's been upended. Everything, everything's been turned around. And obviously, there were you know, historically, I'm sure the Nazis searched you know everything, but we don't yeah. see that. We just see everything's been destroyed, basically. Um, and then you get uh, her diary. Sorry. Um, you know, narrating back to you, saying, "I am Anne's diary, and I'm here to tell this story." Um, yeah. You know, in the spirit of peace, in the spirit that you know maybe it's never happened again. Uh, and then obviously you get you know what happened to each of the members of, of the family going across. Yeah. Um, uh, and it's very, very, very simple, very classy. Uh, and then showing the lights come on all across yeah. the city was just gorgeous. Yeah. Um, and just so, such an effective symbol 
of what the story is going along. And, and the fact that they planted the image of the candle all the way up th throughout the, the movie. And I could see it as, you know, what they were doing, okay, you know, candles import and so forth and so on. But then to use it in this symbolic way, lighting up the city, was yeah. just genius. Pure genius. Oh, perfectly done. I can tell you that by the end of the movie, I was so quick to play Genshin. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. I was just like, yeah. mm -hmm. oh, this is horrible. This is really, really okay. horrible. I, I walked around the house for like a half an Same hour. Here. Just, yeah. just yeah. steaming. I had, I had not to... not oh. sad. Oh, okay. I was steaming. Mm -hmm. I was steaming. Yeah. Pissed. Mm -hmm. Because well, the... you just, you did something to these people that did nothing to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, you were so hell bent on destruction mm -hmm. that you couldn't build anything good. You know? And yeah. it's just like. Mm -hmm. I'm for well, because yeah, it's it, mm -hmm. yeah. it's frustrating. Well, it's it's it's, yeah. it's maddening because yeah. you know at the end you you realize that they were nine months away. They only had nine yeah. months to, yeah, to make it, close. and and then you then you have to stop and think about the following when they go through the list of, mm -hmm. of the where they died. Yeah, and you have to think about the fact that at the time that they were taken. And you know this is probably gonna get you get you too mad all over again because it you know it makes me upset every now and again. Mm. You have to realize that they all knew that they were losing. The Nazis knew that, that, that the end was yeah. near yeah. at that point, mm -hmm. yeah. and they still did it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were they still expending still resources, resources, the efforts to do it, manpower yeah. to do this one thing, mm -hmm. and it's just like, yeah, that's what you do. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. okay, right, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. uh huh. Yeah, there's a special place for you. Versus, yeah, I mean, versus yeah, like what know. the logic would be, like, okay, every single think... bullet, bomb, man, everything mm -hmm. that's transportable, we're sending to the front lines. Mm -hmm. You right. know, whatever that our our policies were before this, nix it. That doesn't matter. That is not a functional, productive right. element of what we're doing. We need to defend these areas, send the men and the people there, and leave whatever behind. But it's like no. Everything was a priority of, of like destroying innocent people. It's like yeah. There's a great story um, of a woman who survived a concentration camp, a um, Jewish woman. Uh, um, I say great story. It's a uh, revealing story. Um, she could play the violin, I believe, or cello. And so the Nazis would bring her in and have her play something, and then you know dismiss her every so often. And when she was interviewed about this, um, she was asked, weren't you afraid to be in front of, of them? And weren't you afraid once they were done, they would do something to you? And she said, that is such a wonderfully modern and, um, and human way of thinking about it. Um, Do you put that much thought into your radio when you turn it off? That's what I was. Right. I was just, I was a thing. Um, and so, I, you know, fear wasn't a matter of it. This is just, this was, this was my status in their eyes and I knew that. Um, and that's, you know, the, the horror of the whole thing is how impersonal it was. How this was just, you know, there was no thought to whether it was a bad thing or not. It, it wasn't. It wasn't logical. In that sense. And yet here we have Meep. Meep, yeah. why are you helping us? Mm -hmm. Because you're my friends. Mm -hmm. Because it's the yeah. right thing to do. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, such a juxtaposition of, of, you know, people. It's like, you have an entire system set up to be inhuman, and then you have people who occupy that system. Mm -hmm. Who are people? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> people are people are capable of a, a great many things. <clears throat> yeah. Yes, great many horrors, mm -hmm. great many wonders, great many horrors. Yep, absolutely. Um, so that is the diary of Anne Frank. Um, any yeah. last minute thoughts? Final thoughts? Oh, 
just as as good as it was. I hope I don't have to watch this again. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I mean it's it's not it's not necessarily going through this long long story mm-hmm. that that really seethes by the time you get to the end of it. It's mm-hmm. just the 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 grand totality of it that yeah. really just boils your blood. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, Stats of Diary of Anne Frank. Um, Impressive. um, A very accurate and effective representation of of the novel and what it is, what was, what it was, what it was, and the message I think behind the the novel. I thought. Yeah. Um, That'll do it for that. We're gonna take a quick break. We'll be back to talk about more recent anime news and such, and we will see you after that.